In this video we're going to look at calculating true altitude. Before we actually do the calculation we need to have a look at a bit of background information. As temperature changes so does pressure and so when temperatures are not according to the International Standard Atmospheric Conditions otherwise known as ISA the altimeter will read incorrectly. Let's consider a column of air in International Standard Atmospheric Conditions. On a hot day Due to the expansion of the column, the column of atmosphere will be taller and similarly on a cold day the atmospheric column will be shorter due to compression. Altimeters are calibrated to indicate specified heights for given pressures under international standard atmospheric conditions. For example, at sea level the altimeter is calibrated to indicate zero feet when the pressure is 1013. Pressure reduces as you go up the column. Because pressure drops as you increase in altitude, by the time you get to 18,500 feet, the pressure has dropped to 500 hectopascals. And so when the altimeter senses 500 hectopascals, it will indicate 18,500 feet. If we go up even higher, when the pressure is 300 hectopascals, it will indicate about 30,000 feet, and so forth. So let's consider a given height. For example, let's pick 30,000 feet, which would have a pressure of 300 hectopascals. This is a fixed percentage about halfway up the column. So when the pressure is 300 hectopascals, the altimeter will indicate 30,000 feet. On a hot day, 300 hectopascals is still halfway up the column. At this halfway position, it would still indicate 30,000 feet but you're not actually at 30,000 feet even though the altimeter is indicating 30,000 feet. And so the actual position of 300 hectopascals will be higher than what it is in reality. The opposite is true on a cold day. 300 hectopascals is still going to be about halfway up the column. And so when it measures 300 hectopascals it will identify the height on the altimeter as being at 30,000 feet but the actual position of 300 hectopascals is lower than it should be. And so we can see that temperature has an effect on indicated altitudes. When the temperatures are hotter than ISA, the altimeter will underread. For example, let's consider that we are at 30,000 feet. In ISA conditions, 30,000 feet would be at 300 hectopascals. But on the hot day, the 300 hectopascals is up higher. Because pressure drops as we gain height, if we are at 30,000 feet, the pressure at our altitude will actually be more than 300 hectopascals if we are at 30,000 feet. And therefore, the altimeter would indicate that we are below 30,000 feet on the hot day. And so, the altimeter will indicate an altitude below its actual altitude. Or another way of looking at this is that the aircraft is higher than what the altimeter indicates on a hot day. The opposite situation is true when conditions are colder than ISA. The altimeter will now overread. Again, let's consider that we are at 30,000 feet. So in ISA conditions, that would be at 300 hectopascals. But on our cold day, 300 hectopascals is down here, therefore our pressure is less than 300 hectopascals if we are at 30,000 feet. So the altimeter will indicate greater than 30,000 feet, even though we are actually at 30,000 feet. So the altimeter will indicate an altitude above the actual altitude. Or we could say it another way that the aircraft is actually lower than what the altimeter indicates on a cold day. So what are the implications of this? If conditions deviate from international standard atmospheric conditions, the altimeter is no longer providing us with accurate altitude information. This is of most critical significance if we are at low altitude, such as when we are conducting an instrument approach. And potentially one of the most dangerous situations is going to be during an instrument landing system approach on a cold day. To help us remember we can use this little saying, high to low, look out below. What that means is if we're flying to a low temperature situation, we are potentially lower than what the altimeter is going to indicate. 
So we can expect on a cold day that the altimeter will overread, making us think that we're safer or higher than we actually are. In addition to this, the accuracy of any pre-takeoff altimeter check is going to be affected by non-ISA conditions. The altimeter error that you experience is around about 4% for every 10 degrees that you are colder than ISA. In the Australian ATPL navigation exam, you are required to calculate the true altitude for given conditions, and there are two methods that you could use. The first method is an estimation. The second method uses the navigation computers, and this is my preference because it is, in fact, more accurate. So let's first of all look at the approximation method. This is based on two principles. The first principle is that the altimeter will overread when colder than ISA. And the converse is true, it will underread if it's hotter than ISA. And so you would apply a correction of 4% for every 10 degrees of ISA deviation. Let's consider an example. The indicated pressure altitude of an aircraft is at 10,000 feet. The temperature is minus 15 degrees. What is the true altitude? The first thing we have to do is to calculate the ISA temperature at 10,000 feet. ISA temperature is based on the assumption of the temperature being 15 degrees at sea level with a drop of 2 degrees for every 1,000 feet. And so at 10,000 feet, we would expect to be 20 degrees colder than the sea level temperature. And so 15 take 20 gives us a temperature of minus 5. And so the ISA conditions at 10,000 feet would be minus 5 degrees. But our temperature is minus 15. So we calculate the ISA deviation. We are 10 degrees colder than ISA, ISA minus 10. For every 10 degrees deviation, it will be altered by 4%. And because it's colder, our altimeter in this situation will overread by 4%. And so the way we calculate this is to multiply it by a factor. And so the true altitude is going to be 10,000 multiplied by 0.96. So for 4%, it would be 0.96. If it was 8%, it would be 0.92. And so for every percentage, we alter this figure by 0.01. If conditions are hotter than ISA, this factor would be greater than 1, and you would multiply by 1.04 if it was 10 degrees hotter than ISA, 1.08 if it was 20 degrees hotter than ISA, and so forth. And so if you multiply 10,000 by 0.96, we come up with an estimated true altitude of 9,600 feet. Let's now look at this calculation using the navigation computer. We use the true altitude window as you can see, it's labeled here. It's the single window, not the double window. So once again, we'll use the same example. The indicated altitude is 10,000 feet. Temperature is negative 15 degrees. What is the true altitude? The first thing to do is to set the 10,000 feet. So each of these little marks is going to be 2,000 feet. And we're going to rotate the outer wheel so that this minus 15 degrees aligns with the 10,000 feet. So we rotate it round. And you will now see that negative 15 degrees is aligned with the 10,000 feet. So we have set the pressure altitude against the outside air temperature. Now we find the indicated altitude on the inner scale. If you forget, have a look down here and you'll see the inner scale has the phrase calibrated altitude. You can think of that as indicated. And on the outside scale, we get the true altitude. And so we are looking for the indicated altitude on the inner scale. An indicated altitude of 10,000 feet is up here where the number 10 is. Our true altitude is going to be on the outer scale. To help you, you might want to rotate this cursor around to align that up. And you can see the true altitude is directly above the 10. And in this situation, we'll get 9,560 feet. This is about 40 feet difference compared to the estimated value that we did before.